This colorful springtime garden bench is easy to make, it's super sturdy, and it only requires seven two by fours to make. If you'd like to make one of your own, I've got planes available on a pay what you want basis. See the link down in the description. All right, I've got seven two by four studs here. When you're picking out two by fours for this project, make sure that it's labeled KDHT, kiln dried, heat treated. And that means that this is much drier than the green two by four studs that you would use for framing out a house. The most important part of this project is going to be the seat, the part that you sit on. So I'm gonna start with that. And what I wanna do is look through these boards and find the best looking boards for that and then within those boards I want to pick out which edge looks the best so that that can be up the kind of the butt friendly side of the board. <laughs> what I'm looking for are boards that are straight have a nice looking grain that aren't uh, that don't have any knot holes on them like this one here it's got a knot right here so I would just want to make sure that that's going to be on the underside of the seat and this is the side that you want to sit on. By the way, if you'd like to make this miter station, I've got plans available as part of my weekend workshop course. Actually, almost everything you see in my shop here is part of the weekend workshop. Check it out over at theweekendworkshop.com. The fence on this miter station doesn't extend out far enough for me to set up a stop block. So what I've done is I'm just gonna use this scrap of plywood and make an extension fence. Now I can measure the length of these seat slats. In this case, I'm gonna go 44 inches. And I can set up a stop block right here. Before I cut these slats to their exact length, what I wanna do is just cut a little bit off of the ends of these two by fours. The ends are usually kind of mangled a little bit and this will clean those up. Now I can just slide it down to where it's touching that stop block and cut it to its final length. Over here at my drill press, I need to drill a hole in the end of each of these boards. And I want those to all be consistent so that I can thread a dowel through those. So what I've done is I've set up a stop block over here against this fence on my drill press table so that I can just line each of these up and then drill the hole in the same location. I've got the best edge, the part that's gonna be the top of the seat marked on each of these boards. So I'll make sure that that edge is always facing the fence. That way, in case it's a little off center this way, they'll still line up as long as they're oriented the same direction. Also, if you don't have a drill press, you could still make these reasonably accurate with a handheld drill just by drilling those first two holes and then taking your next board and clamping, clamping both of these together and then use that hole as kind of a template to drill all the way through and into the next one. What I'm doing here is just putting a small piece of masking tape on the opposite side of that good edge so that I can keep these oriented once I paint them. Now what I want to do is sand all of the top edges nice and smooth using 120 grit medium sandpaper. This is a rare occasion where those rounded edges of 2x4s actually comes in handy. All I need to do is kind of smooth them out and round them out a little bit more. One of the most important things about building this project is to paint it as you go because it would be very difficult to paint this all once it's assembled. And although the kind of the whole conceit of this project that it, that is that it's a brightly colored project for spring, the paint also holds a more important purpose and that's to protect the wood from the elements, from the harsh sunlight and from rain, snow or whatever else you've got. I really believe that probably the best protection you can provide wood outdoors is going to be an exterior latex house paint. 
The last one of these benches I made was about 10 years ago and I have never had to repaint it and it's only just now starting to flake off, which is probably about what you would expect when you, if you painted your house. But really I just like having a really bright pop of color in the garden like this. And the most important part of this is to make sure you paint this in grain really well and seal that up because that is where most of the water, any water is going to get absorbed through that end grain. I can paint the other side when that's dry. Of course there's no reason why you couldn't use, you know, a fancier, nicer wood. You could use like redwood or cedar or some sort of outdoor specific type of wood and you could finish it with a clear coat or even like a, a deck stain or something would work. The only drawback to that is those are all going to be maintenance finishes. In other words, really every year you're going to have to reapply that finish if you want it to provide any protection. And let's get real, you're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> I know every time I, I finish something for, the, for an outdoor project, I, and I know that, and I always tell myself, well, you know, every spring or maybe every other spring, I'll just get out there and I'll refinish it. Never happens. But hey, maybe you're more diligent than I am. Plus, look at that blue. I mean, that's awesome looking. I cut out a couple of three quarter inch dowels to thread through these holes. I think what I'll do is flip these over. One thing I did was I sanded these dowels down a little bit so that they would slide in easier. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of thread them through like this and then space them apart. Okay. Also, I think I'm going to draw a line here along that dowel, something like that. So ultimately these are gonna be spaced about a quarter inch apart. You know, I could probably just eyeball it, but I'm gonna use a couple of these boards as spacers here. So I'll just start on one end and get these together. And then what I'm gonna do is secure the slats to the dowels using a screw. This is called a Japanese flush trim saw. If you don't have one of these, a hacksaw blade works really well. I set up another stop block so I can cut the four legs all to the same length. And then the four leg connectors. I'll attach these end caps with three inch deck screws right into that end grain. The leg assemblies are going to look like this. In order to do that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the cross piece and I'm laying it, laying it this way with the paint up. And then, let's see, I can use this piece to just kind of rest it on. And I've got this board, which is three quarter inch thick, just a scrap that I can use to line this up three quarters of an inch in from the end of that cross piece. And I can also use it to line it up with the top. I'm 
Back over here at my drill press, I need to bore two holes towards the ends of each of the remaining two leg connector pieces. Each of these holes is gonna be just a little over halfway deep. These are the holes that are going to attach the seat. If you're not familiar with drill presses, they have a depth stop on it. So in this case, I set it to stop when it reaches that point. And I've got my stop block on my fence set up over here so that each of these will be in the same location. These are pretty important that these are in the right location so that they line up with the slats that they're gonna drive into. And I need to drill three holes along the edge of this center stretcher. I also wanna point out that an alternative method of attaching the legs to the seat is to use pocket screws. And that's originally how I was going to do this. I'll leave that alternative in the plans, but I wanted to show how to do it without a pocket hole jig in case you don't have that and if you already have a drill. And this procedure also, you don't have to use a drill press, just use a handheld drill and get it reasonably straight. In the plans, I'll show both ways of attaching this, both with these holes or with the pocket screws. Now what I can do is attach the stretcher to the leg cross piece. I've made a mark in the center there. I'll just line this up this way and I'll clamp it down. Now I can attach this stretcher assembly to the leg assemblies. And one thing to point out is that those screws are staggered, so I want to do the opposite of those on this side so that these don't run into those. In case you had any doubts, this thing is really sturdy. And by sturdy, I mean heavy. So if all goes according to plan, this center stretcher here should line up with that center slat and by God it does. Now I just need to center it this way. I'll attach it using those three inch deck screws. And now you can see that whole idea of drilling those wide holes is just so that I don't have to have like six inch long screws. This part isn't really completely necessary, but if you want, to really finish this off nicely, you can plug these holes. Before I apply a final coat of paint, I'm gonna lightly sand everything down. This will just make the surfaces feel nice and smooth. I wanted to get this completely painted before I called it quits for the day, just so that it would have time to dry completely overnight. And of course the problem here is that the surfaces that would be touching this paper would get stuck to that. So what I have are these little blocks like this that I just have a screw driven through these. And so it's just a tiny point of contact so that after I painted all those underside surfaces, including the bottoms of those legs, that I can just set these up on that and that I can continue to paint the rest of the project. Hey, I wanna put in a quick plug for my podcast. If you haven't heard it in a while, or if you've never heard it, it's called Creative Culture. It's all about creativity and creative people and how they affect our culture. I absolutely love doing that podcast. It's so much fun and it's so interesting to talk to such a wide range of creative people. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. I wanna give a big heartfelt thanks to all of you who support this show over on Patreon. It's your support that helps to keep my videos sponsor free. I really appreciate all your help. Thanks for watching everybody.